Let's get more on uh, the Libya talks. Richard White is the director of the Center for Political Military Analysis at Hudson Institute. And he joins us now live from Washington. Uh, Richard, thank you very much for your time. Uh, we've seen other examples, haven't we? Notably in Syria, where weapons have ended up in the wrong hands, despite good intentions. Um, has the international community given any guarantees that this won't happen again? No, and this was one of the fears that has been working against the arms deliveries in the past. However, in the case of Libya, there are so many small arms already in the country, many from Gaddafi's former stocks, that it's really not clear to me that any additional arms that are supplied to the insurgents, uh, to the government, as long as they're not especially advanced or surface-to-air missiles or something, if they're just uh, light arms and, and small arms and light ammunition, light weapons, then I think it shouldn't be a problem. I don't think there's any additional risk compared to the possible gain. It's, it's so how, how reliable a partner is the unity government right now? How stable and strong are they? Well, that's another one of the serious obstacles. In addition to concerns about what would happen to any arms flows and empowering the insurgents, there's the fact that, as in, as in Syria, the West doesn't really have a good, strong partner in Libya. The uh, government is of uncertain quality. It's recognized internationally, but its strength within Libya is contested. And particularly on the military domain, it's not at all clear that without the weapons it would be able to uh, sustain major victories and conquer much of the territory occupied by the Islamic State or the other militias for that matter. So is this the extent of the international community's involvement, do you think, or will it need greater military cooperation to, to ultimately defeat Daesh? Well, the, the international community, particularly the Western powers, have uh, at different times said they would be willing to do different things. As you know, the reason where we are now is that the NATO forces helped overthrow the Gaddafi government with a large-scale air campaign. Uh, at times, there's been discussion of sending in large numbers of uh, West NATO trainers or presuming um, extensive air support. But so, so far, it's just been small numbers of special forces uh, and some I intermittent occasional airstrikes. And I think that's why they're going for the armed supplies, because it allows them to ha it allows the West to ha support its and achieve its objectives of limiting the migrant flow, defeating the Islamic State without putting at risk a large number of Western troops with the risk that also that any intervention would backfire. So strategically then, do you think this is, is the right move at the moment and this is the right way forward? Well, n not having full insight into what's happening on the ground, which I'm not sure even our governments do, I think this is probably a good gamble. I think that the risks are small given the large number of weapons already in the country. Um, and it's possible that the government could do better than people think. And, and actually, as in, uh, in the case of the Iraqi government in the 1980s and 90s, uh, and sorry, 2000s, uh, turn things around. I mean, it's just, we just, these kind of insurgencies, civil wars, you just don't know. And so it's, it seems to me it's a, an acceptable risk in the moment. If it fails, they'll have to try something else. Okay, Richard Weiss, thank you very much for your time.